give the main stage and the floor to the presenter, to the experts that are conducting the webinars. Um, so, and this is why we ask you to bear with us because this is our debut in the role of uh, presenters. Um, so be kind. Um, but then why did we decide to do it? Obviously, uh, the uh, realities uh, of COVID-19 has changed a lot of, um, the, uh, the, about the way we work. Uh, most of our lives, both private and professional, have uh, moved uh, online and uh, that brought to the forefront a whole range of new uh, formats of educational activities. Webinars being uh, one of the most popular ones. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I can't count how many webinars uh, I have signed up for or attended in the last two months in comparison to, I don't know, even six months ago. Um, but given as this is a new reality, it's only natural that we have to adjust and probably attend, uh, acquire some new, new skills. Uh, so we were wondering how could we help with that? And the, the thing we thought we could share with you is, is exactly that, is our uh, experiences acquired through, throughout those two years of making webinars. Lessons learned, uh, hopefully mistakes to avoid uh, for you. Um, but what I would like to underline is that we're going to be talking about our experiences, the things we've learned, but this is exactly that, the way we do it, kind of our method that we have developed. Um, this is by no means the only way to do webinars. Um, probably it's not the best even way to do webinars, but it's just what has worked well uh, for us and hopefully it can uh, be somehow, somehow helpful to you. Um, we will try to be as practical as possible. So for all, all of you who are thinking of doing webinars, of starting doing webinars, uh, hopefully by the end of this hour, you will leave uh, here uh, thinking that you have a set of information that will allow you to go on into the world and uh, produce uh, webinars. Um, we uh, we would love uh, to uh, if uh, if amongst you are uh, uh, some of you I'm sure have experience in producing webinars already. So if you are, then we very much welcome any types of comments, criticisms. Please share them with us via the chat. We'll be monitoring that uh, uh, closely, uh, as this is a learning experience for uh, for us too. So we are learning from this uh, this as well, and this is an opportunity for us to to kind of grow. And uh, everything we'll be talking about today will be a part of a, a, a guide, a Tech Soup Europe short guide to making, making webinars, uh, a document that we have developed. Uh, and a link to that document you will receive in, a, in an email, a follow-up email that will be in your mailbox uh, tomorrow. Uh, okay, so as my old uh, role of facilitator, what I would normally do is now I will go through the logistics very briefly. Uh, so this webinar, our meeting today will take about 40 minutes of our presentation uh, and then we'll have a 15 minute Q&A during which would love to hear from you. Uh, but as I, like I said, uh, as you have all, all already noticed, you are all muted and you will remain so for the rest of the webinar. Um, but the fact that you cannot speak does not mean that we, we do not want you to engage with us. Um, so if you have any uh, questions at any point, uh, any comments, any criticisms, which we welcome always, uh, then please put them, uh, put them, share, share them with us. Uh, via the chat box. Uh, we will be monitoring that and we will also be looking for questions um, throughout the webinar that we'll address in the last part of our meeting. Uh, there will be some polls and some interactive exercises throughout, so if you want to keep your phones close to you, that will also be great. Um, we will be, of course, recording this. Um, which reminded, reminds me to do it. Uh, we will be recording this and the recording will be, a link to the recording will be uh, in the follow-up email you will receive uh, tomorrow. And uh, usually this would be the moment uh, where um, as a facilitator, I would say then please expert presenter, uh, the stage is yours. Uh, but today uh, this only means more of us. Okay, so let me just, uh, let me close this and go here. 
Um, just to very briefly to let you know what you can expect uh, today, um, we'll quickly tell you about our general approach to, uh, to webinars, what we think, feel is the most important. We will go through the tech part, as I know, especially for the ones who are starting, um, this, is, this kind of brings a lot of worry and uh, a lot of focus is put on that part. Uh, Kasia will tell you a little bit about our comms uh, strategy approach. Uh, Anna will uh, give you a brief introduction into the adult learning rules and the way we work with the presenters and the experts for the webinars. And then I will take you through sort of step by step, very nitty gritty, uh, practical um, activities that need to happen in order for a webinar to, to happen, to take place. So what happens at each uh, stage. Um, and then uh, we'll be very much looking forward to any uh, questions, additional questions you might have in the um, last part. Okay, let's go. Oh, yes, but before we start, um, just so that you, you, we know that you are with us uh, and not just listening, if you could quickly answer us this question, you should see a poll on your screens. And this is obviously related to the fact that webinars seem to be everywhere these days. Uh, and we are just wondering, what is your first reaction when you hear the word? Um, wonderful, you're voting. 70% of you have voted. Time for last answers. It's interesting. Okay, last answers and I'm stopping the poll. Okay. Do you see the, I hope you see the results, which are uh, surprising uh, because there seems to be a, a, a split of votes between most of you who enjoy uh, webinars and um, equally, uh, equally big group of people who, who miss the face-to-face -face, uh, trainings. Um, as uh, sometimes I do too, uh, a lot of, uh, there's a, a, a part, part of you who are wondering what is a webinar really? Because it seems it covers a whole range of uh, formats. Um, yes, this is, uh, this is interesting because um, we, the way we're gonna talk about it, we've been doing webinars for two years. Obviously now we are experiencing a flood of them because uh, everybody started doing them because of what the situation is. Um, and what we're trying to do now is, yeah, to kind of uh, share our experiences with you in order to hopefully make webinars better or at least um, the format uh, a little bit better. Uh, okay, thank you for those, for your answers. Um, before, um, before you start, you make a decision about making a webinar, and I know this might seem a little bit redundant, um, the advice I'm about to give, um, is the way we started is always thinking about what is it that we want to share? Is there something interesting, valuable, or useful to our audiences that we think we can uh, provide? Because we deeply, deeply believe that content is key when it comes to webinars, especially now that there's so many of them. Uh, so you really have to make sure that you know what you want to share uh, with others uh, because people will be forgiving uh, for any technological mishaps, anything that goes wrong during the presentation, as long as uh, what you're presenting and what you're sharing with them is somehow important to them and valuable and they can use it in their daily work. So this is always, always the first step, not the format, not the form, uh, the content. Um, you always start with the content. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we've been doing webinars for two years um, and everything, kind of the model we've arrived uh, uh, at right now is, um, is the result of sometimes painful, uh, both to us and uh, participants, uh, unfortunately, I think, uh, are uh, trials and errors. 
because uh, we have been trying different things, uh, learning uh, uh, from, from the mistakes that we have made. But we really do believe that this is the only way you can, um, you can develop your own method, your own way of doing things. Uh, because hopefully the uh, tips we'll give you will be useful. But in the end, you yourself have to kind of go through it. So don't, as long as you, uh, uh, in the moment, the moment you have your content down and you know what you want to say, just start doing it because it's really the only way um, you can learn. And, uh, and this is what we call trial by fire. I mean, you have, you just have to do, uh, there's no uh, a hard number, meaning five or 10 webinars, but you just have to gather your experience by, uh, by practicing. Uh, so these are a few general rules that we uh, try to follow. Um, the technology. Uh, I know that this is uh, something that a lot of you focus on, especially when you're uh, starting. And we at TechSoup obviously care uh, very much about technology. But in a sense, when it comes to webinars, um, it really is secondary to content. Meaning that if you do have something interesting to share with your audiences, then don't think too much about uh, your um, limitations when it comes to uh, software. You can use, you can really use, you can start at least with whatever is available to you. Um, the technology does not have to be high tech uh, all at once from the beginning. We, uh, in our experience, we have started doing webinars using just Zoom meetings. It, was, it wasn't a webinar software app. We just started the first five we did. We just uh, did via Zoom meetings. Um, and, and it went, it went, it, it didn't go great, but it went, uh, it went okay and it allowed us to, to develop further. Um, so don't focus too much um, on the software. We, of course, it's easier and it's more convenient and it's more user friendly for the participants to use especially developed software for, um, for webinars. We use, as you can see, we use uh, at TechSoup Europe uh, Zoom webinars. Um, our partners in the United States use Global Meet as well. Uh, Cisco, um, WebEx by Cisco is something that we also uh, use within our team. Um, so, but at, at a certain point, all those softwares are somewhat similar. Obviously, they differ in, in the look and the in different technical elements, but they're all similar. So uh, you can find different um, comparisons online. We we do not uh, need to direct you to them. It's in a way, you just pick one and go with that. And if you don't like it, you can always uh, switch and change. So choose the one that is available to you that you can afford or that you have used uh, as a participant and liked. That's always a great recommendation. Um, so start with what, what is available to you. Um, one thing we would ask you to consider uh, is uh, if, you're de if you decide to buy a dedicated software uh, to use, uh, then consider your audiences because we as TechSoup Europe, we mostly produce webinars uh, for international audiences. So our webinars are in English and our whole communication is in English. But we also did a webinar a month ago dedicated to Polish teachers and educators. And we had 900 participants. Um, and I will not tell you how many emails we got with people asking us, having trouble to logging in, finding the link to the webinar. And that was because all the communication, all the emails they received were in English. So if you're addressing your uh, educational material mostly to your native audience, then, then please consider this while choosing the software because Zoom doesn't offer, um, it, for example, Zoom doesn't offer uh, Polish. Global Meet, for example, does. So it, it differs on your, um, um, on your audiences. Mm, we, of course, invite you to, if you're an NGO, if you're an activist, then please visit your country um, website of TechSoup and see what is available to you at a discounted uh, price through our donation program. Um, the um, other things related to technology, we talked about softwares, hardware, uh, meaning uh, special cameras, uh, microphone, um, these are all nice to have, but not necessary. Meaning if you're starting out, uh, your laptop camera is fine. Your uh, microphone is fine. Your headset that you use at work is uh, uh, fine. Uh, 
it's we will direct you to a wonderful presentation about organizing online meetings by our friends from Outriders Network, uh, where they recommend that if you want to buy something, then invest in a microphone, uh, which is fine. But again, if you're just starting, it's superfluous. It's not. It's it's something extra. It's not what. Uh, it's not necessary for you to start. Internet connection. That's obvious. Um, if you can somehow, most of us are using Wi-Fi, but if you can somehow make sure that you connect to a, to a router via cable, that's always safest. Um, but as we are using um, the Wi-Fi, most of us are using Wi-Fi, then please, for example, have your uh, phone close to you, because if something happens to your Wi-Fi, you can always have an alternative source of uh, data transfer. Um, I also, for example, here on my right, I have a second computer if something happens. So you can always make sure you, you also have that type of hardware um, with you. And as it is with technology, whether we're talking software or uh, hardware, uh, test everything. Test everything when you get it, meaning test it for yourself, click through it, uh, go through every option, test it as a participant if you're using webinar uh, uh, software. Uh, the same thing with hardware and test it by yourself and test it within the team uh, you're working with. And this is not to avoid any uh, disasters or mishaps because they will happen. They for sure will happen. Uh, it's just about making you more comfortable when they happen uh, so that you don't panic and you know what to do when something, uh, something goes wrong because it definitely will go uh, wrong. Kasia. It will, it will. Uh, so the decision is made about the webinar. The software is chosen. It's time to speak with the communication person, if you have such a person in your organization. Uh, because we need to decide if you prepare a series of webinars or a one-time event. It's important from the communication point of view. Do you create a special hashtag for this series? Uh, do you prepare the landing page? Mm, you need to think about the goals of such series of webinars. Uh, you need to decide on KPIs mm, and everything needs to be connected to the communication strategy of your organization. If you prepare your first webinar, I recommend to speak with the producer, like I have this uh, comfort to work with uh, Maya. Uh, to prepare a template uh, with uh, answers for the basic question, what is going to happen, uh, where, when, uh, who will be the host, um, who is the webinar for, uh, what are the key takeaways for our um, target audience. And based on that information delivered after the preparation with the um, presenters, the communication person may create, a, create content and schedule a campaign promotional campaign, and I will speak about it later. Wonderful. Anka. You have to Hi, yes, I am unmuted. And also I have my uh, 450 minutes um, time. So I will be very briefly guiding uh, you through why we care about adult learning. And for us, a webinar is always an educational uh, event, even if it's an hour. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we think why TechSoup actually cares about uh, making people uh, know more about webinars. And this is how we start thinking about what do we want people to get from the webinar. And that gets us into, can I have the, uh, the next slide? To thinking about how human brain learns. And however silly it sounds, we try to think from the participant perspective to make it as engaging, as um, relevant to participants as possible in order for you to take as much as we want you to take. So make it efficient work. Because yes, it is quite a lot of work. I think we spent over 10 hours preparing this particular webinar and we really, thought we know so much already about it. So switching this um, 
uh, focus on the participant and thinking what does participant need to take so what do we want you to do and our motivation is basically please do good webinars so we're sharing whatever we already know with you and what i know as a, a adult education expert is that people learn only something that they actually interested in so what is relevant what solves their problem and you think that your problem and basically our problem as well is how to make an interesting webinar and how to make people take as much as possible so uh this problem centric is easier than okay so we have this great content let's just share the content and then nobody comes and nobody does what we want and when the issue is more relevant and it's presented as more relevant. So we pay attention into presenting it as more relevant. Uh, that actually makes the human brain want to learn faster. Um, what is important is the principle of emotional connection. And this, uh, so emotions are helping, like kind of enhancing the brain into learning. So we want it or not, when there are emotions involved, that will happen probably faster than if there is less emotions. And emotion, how do we create emotions? That is something that can be created by stories. So showing stories and creating empathy to you as a presenter or expert, but also showing different, um, for instance, results of campaigns that you're presenting and showing what was the success, what were the troubles, so something real basically or showing um, the pieces of knowledge that you want people to actually digest in the larger context of human emotions and why it is worth um, learning this particular thing. One important thing, especially for somebody who is sending other people for webinars, fear is not the emotion that uh, enhances uh, learning. So fear is the last thing we want. And that's why um, for instance, tests are not really working unless the tests are being thought as, hey, think again what you just learned. So like, let's come back and the brain can anchor more what you just got. Uh, while, and one more thing that is super important and that I really like is fun, is extremely underestimated by people. Uh, so uh, fun is important. Fun engages brain almost by accident. And this accident, we can, uh, we can take advantage of this fun. And this is uh, why we try to be real and we're not really too afraid about making mistakes because, well, we're doing our best and we try to laugh at it. And then we hope that you can also see that. Mike, can you show me the second slide? I'm sorry for being so quick, but I got this a super advanced task to be the quickest possible. So this is why we're working with experts that we invite. Because an expert practitioner, like an amazing social media uh, expert, probably will not know too much about how to teach and how to train people into using social media. So we support those, like how to connect the, the content with emotions, how to make it more fun, what is the role of it. But also an expert trainer does not need to be an expert in on, online learning because webinars are more, uh, more hard. And we are showing you bits and pieces of how to engage people uh, but this is uh, only a piece of it and creating a whole experience, it takes time, usually at least like an hour or, or two to work with the expert. So thinking that the content is the key and we have amazing experts, that's why we have a coach, which is me, that is training, that, that is helping to shape the training to be better for online and to actually educate. I'm done. Amazing, within five minutes. Um, yes, I am the one who's installing the terrible five minute rules. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, as you have seen uh, uh, for the last uh, uh, couple of minutes, we produce uh, webinars as a team. We produce them for Tech Europe. We produce them in this team that you can see, the three of us. Um, with the presenter, uh, which we call the expert that we invite to uh, uh, collaborate with us. And this is someone that we have seen, that we know, that we think could be, has knowledge or skills that are important for our audiences to share. Um, there's usually a facilitator, a producer, 
that is uh, my role and that encompasses everything from coming up with the idea uh, for a webinar uh, or a series of webinars because we also do series of webinars um, contacting the presenter uh, setting up cooperation with him or her um, setting up the technical side of webinar meaning doing the registration and setting up everything in zoom then during the webinar itself doing the intro making sure everything uh, uh, works properly doing the Q&A session and making sure that the follow-up activities happen so that the emails that you will get tomorrow uh, are sent out and also um, I'm responsible for doing a summary uh, um, of the webinar for organizing the work of our team and kind of uh, uh, feedback round uh, around that so it's everything from both the content side and the technical production uh, side uh, our co-facilitator Anna what do you do I am on the chat so chat not bot it's me and I support whatever troubles can happen uh, so if there is something wrong with anybody's uh, technical problems this is me and also I as you could see I copy paste uh, so I copy all the questions that are on the go and we have a separate document with all the questions and they are assigned to the to experts so we can come back to them in the Q&A session. Kasia. Uh, Kasia uh, shows the word, spread the, the word about this awesome webinars uh, and takes care about the registration number growing, people joining and also uh, dealing with troubles like we are having <laughs> now uh, that we are live but not on TechSupira <laughs> website <laughs> so Never mind. yes so uh, it happens technology yeah happens. and while we are showing you we do realize that this might be uh, the situation we have the luxury of working within a team of three uh, team of four with the counting the presenter it might not be the reality you're facing because uh, you might not have a, a comms person comms wizard uh, at your uh, at your organization um, and uh, but the the thing is that we what we wanted to show you is that it's not about numbers per se because of course you can do it with a with a smaller group or even by yourself, but uh, so it's not about numbers but it's about different roles that need to uh, be played and that different responsibilities that uh, different people have during uh, the preparation phase and during the uh, carrying out of the webinar. So there are very different things, a lot of things happening at once. So if you're just doing them by yourself, it's just way more difficult and it makes it for a more difficult experience both to we think to the produ producing team and to the participants because it can translate if you're having trouble then then the participants can uh, can kind of see that uh, so if it's possible then please always set up the work uh, within a larger team of at least uh, two people okay okay we've been talking for a long time so it's time to switch to something else. If you would take your phones or use your computers, that's also fine, and go to uh, www.menti.com and use the code that you see. It's 617640. Is it working? I hope it's working. Oh, I can see it's working. Please, I know it takes a while to give the answers, uh, but if you bear th with us through the question for just one more minute, I'll let you answer in peace and then I'll show you the results. Okay, I can see them changing as we speak. But they're saying, okay, last ones. Almost half of you have has already answered. Oh, a change in the lead. Okay, let me show you 
Let me show you your answers. Do you see it? And it's changing life because you're still answering, wonderful. Um, but what seems to be the case um, is that most of you see yourselves as uh, facilitators uh, or co-facilitators, that's wonderful. Um, but it's all equally great that we have experts with us as well, because we think if you as an expert know how you like you would like to work and how preparing a webinar works, that that makes our job so much uh, the facility, the producers work so much uh, uh, easier. Um, but obviously, we have a lot of uh, 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 an interesting group of people who uh, who are just participants, and it's also equally if you as a participant, because you always as a participant, you can always tell a good webinar from a bad webinar. So in that way, it's also important to know the rules of how to do um, a successful one. Okay, wonderful. Let us come back to the presentation. Okay, so now, um, as we are all already behind schedule, uh, I will take you through step-by-step uh, -step kind of a uh, very detailed um, description of what it takes, when does the work begin uh, on preparing a webinar and what steps do you need to take, or at least what steps do we take the way we, we uh, organize it. So um, depending on, we, we will be using an example of one webinar. So how do you prepare one webinar from happening? If you're doing a series like we are, uh, I don't know, like four episode series of webinars, then the work obviously needs to start a little bit early because you plan everything ahead. But for one webinar, we usually start about uh, four weeks before, and that uh, work obviously starts with us having an idea about what we want to do and finding a person that we, an expert, a presenter that we want to do it with. Um, and that cooperation starts with an email, uh, which is followed up by a call um, that we organize, meaning me and Anka as a co co-facilitator. Uh, we contact the, the presenter and uh, in an email we describe uh, in detail how the process will work uh, and uh, during that call we kind of go into more detail and we answer questions the presenter might have and we discuss things. We always start the discussion with talking about the goals of the webinar. So these are the things Anka mentioned. Uh, so we always start with the uh, participants perspective of what are the attendees are going to get out of this like why are we doing this what is the main message we have then we take the presenter through the role division so we explain what is his role his or her role what what does the facilitator do what does the co uh, uh, facilitator do how the process will uh, work we obviously talk about logistics um, date that's clear, that's obviously you choose the one that fits both of your schedules and you block that time. Uh, the time of a webinar, uh, this is something, uh, this can be tricky, uh, but we throughout our uh, two years of experience, we've kind of landed on doing webinars around lunchtime, meaning during work uh, hours. Uh, this can obviously differ from, from your experience. Uh, we did, uh, last year we did a webinar, uh, Anka led a webinar uh, dedicated to self-care for activists. And because that topic required a little bit more headspace, a little bit different uh, setting, then we did that one in the afternoon. Uh, so people were probably at home. Uh, but for more work-related uh, topics and issues, we, we do it uh, dur during the day. We try, we, the, the webinars we do, uh, we try not to extend them uh, after one hour. So it's usually a 40-minute presentation and then a Q&A session at the end. But when it comes to formats, obviously that can look differently. Uh, you can do a part of the presentation and a Q&A session, second part of the presentation and a Q&A session. You can do a Q&A session in the, um, in the beginning uh, to get to know the participants. You can do uh, a Q&A session in the middle. Um, that's all up to you and the preferences of your present presenter. And you can, it's, what's fun is that you can experiment with the formats. Once you get a hang of it, you can kind of try different things and see what works for what. Mm, and then we also, in this email and in this call, we explain how the whole process will work. 
and so how the preparation period will go. Um, and this go kind of goes back to uh, uh, what Anna said a little bit in the beginning. So depending on whether you're dealing with an experienced webinar uh, expert, meaning a person who has done webinars before, that um, that preparation period can be shorter, meaning it's the email, it's the call, and then it's a trial run, which we'll talk about in a second. Or if a person has less experience with doing webinars, then an additional call might be useful, uh, an additional call to go through the presentation to explain the rules of adult learning. Um, so you, you always have to take into account uh, the level of expertise and experience of the, of the expert you're working with. Um, the format, apart from where the Q&A session falls, um, you have already um, experienced them. We like to uh, put interactive elements into the webinars we produce, as we believe. Um, webinars are, by default, a very one-sided uh, format, meaning it's literally us with the microphones and you, all of you, being muted uh, on the other side, which is not a natural uh, setup. So what we try to do is to engage the audiences, the participants, as much as possible. And, uh, and for that, we use polls, which uh, Zoom offers, and you, you, we use that in the beginning where you answered the question about your associations with webinars. Uh, we use the Mentimeter uh, just a second ago. It's a great tool. We encourage you to, to go and check it out because it's free and it offers different types of data visualization and voting options. Uh, Kahoot, um, I don't know if you've heard about it. It's also a very popular kind of quiz competition type of app, also free and available. The only thing with Kahoot is that if you're starting out do, uh, with doing webinars, um, we do not necessarily recommend it if it's your first one or a second one, because there's a lot of switching between the tabs. So you can you have to switch between screens, and it can it can become a bit um, a bit difficult, because with interactive formats, we like them, we use them. Uh, but the, the key thing to remember here is not to overuse them. So use them only if it serves a purpose. Don't try to go for fireworks because any interactive element that takes a person from your presentation, from the webinar to, I don't know, to make people use their phone, kind of use, um, use the, um, a different tab or a different uh, device. It can be interesting because it creates energy and something's happening, but it can also uh, invite chaos or frustration if something doesn't work. So always use it um, wisely. Uh, okay, so you have everything set up with, with the presenter. You have the layout of the how the webinar will go. And then it's three weeks before you get the description from the presenter. And that includes a general uh, paragraph about the webinar, what the webinar will be about, uh, who is it for, uh, and key takeaways. This is what the format that works best for us. You get the bio and the photo from the presenter for the uh, promo purposes. And then you set up the registration. And this is if you're using webinar softwares, whether it be Zoom or whatever you're using, this is automatic. And most of them provide wonderful kind of automatic options because you can you, you can set up registration. It allows you to send emails to participants, both attendees and the people who do not, who register but don't attend. It allows you to introduce your own branding so you can put your logo in there. Um, you can ask uh, uh, additional questions to participants, like we asked you whether this was your first webinar. Um, so there's a lot of options and it, it's good to uh, do it through a registration because then it helps you to build a more um, uh, of a base of your uh, audiences. You find out more about uh, who's attending your webinars. It also allows you to set up reminders um, for, the, for the webinar. We usually do it in a format of one day before and an hour before. And Kasia will tell you a little bit more about why that the registration times are, um, are tricky. What is important to remember, you don't need to set it up too early. So like you don't need four weeks to set up a registration because people make decisions about uh, participating in online events more spontaneously. So it, you don't need a head start of, I don't know, three, four weeks. Uh, you just need to set it up and uh, uh, um, it comes alive minimum two weeks before. And something for you to uh, remember so you don't get discouraged. Um, if are between 30 and 40% of people who registered actually attend your webinar, 
that is great. That is wonderful, and that is a wonderful uh, statistic. Actually, we're breaking records today because I think about like 70% of you uh, are here, 70% of people who registered attend. But it's usually every webinar we've done, and never mind whether it had 900 people registered or 100 people registered, uh, between 30 and 40 uh, appeared. So don't get discouraged that uh, uh, you got only, only that. And now, I've already been talking too long, Kasia. And my five minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, so uh, the awesome webinar is planned. We are two weeks uh, before. Uh, it's time to start promotion. The next slide, please. Uh, don't do it too early. Um, you have enough resources for the next two weeks because, as Maya said, uh, we do it spontaneously. 33% of us register the day before the webinar on uh, the day of the uh, webinar. Uh, so two weeks uh, is oh, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, are also set the ideal days to send the invitation and start your uh, campaign uh, introducing uh, the webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do, I start with the article on the, our techsupeurope.org uh, website. If it's like one time story like today, or I create landing page with the uh, easy to remember and understand uh, title, very well works titles with takeaways in the title, like how to do a webinar, digital marketing classes, workshop, course, something like this, trends of social media 2020. Uh, so uh, think well about the, the title. Uh, in the description, the announcement, of course, right, what it is about, who is going to lead it, what are the key takeaways, uh, but highlight the date, the hour, especially when you do international event and there are different time zones, uh, and uh, make a nice registration button because this is the goal, uh, to get uh, as many people as possible for the webinar. The next thing, uh, I do uh, is creating a Facebook event. Um, so I don't think that many people visit everyday Tech of Europe website. <laughs> More of uh, uh, you I will find on Facebook. Uh, that's why I do it. Here I can uh, share it with uh, friends, with followers. Uh, I can tag the experts and their networks. I really recommend to um, partner with uh, networks because the reach is higher. Uh, you have a nice calendar of the webinar coming uh, uh, also on your uh, Facebook profile. Uh, but the tricky business here is that uh, many people can click going or interested, uh, but they won't do the second step, clicking tickets and the registration link. So your job <laughs> is uh, remind them about it. Uh, and today it went really well because uh, it's not only registration, but participation. So remind your followers uh, when the, the webinar is coming and this uh, the higher um, involvement of the communication should be on the day before and the day of the webinar. And uh, two weeks before, I also sent a newsletter. If you have such a possibility, you have your uh, subscribers of the newsletter, the software, do it two weeks before, and of course, in the morning of the webinar. If it is a series, please um, remind about a webinar coming. If your uh, software has uh, automation, uh, don't forget uh, to use it. So if somebody opened the first um, newsletter but didn't click register, you can resend it automatically after a few days. And if uh, the receiver didn't click it at all, you can also repeat it a few times. <clears throat> um, and uh, don't forget about social media uh, campaign. Uh, no matter how obvious it seems, uh, many people just forgot to do it because it's uh, a lot of job. <laughs> uh, well, then on the next slide, um, you see that uh, what, if you want to stand out on the social media, uh, you need to use uh, visuals. How to do it? I recommend you our uh, YouTube channel. You will find the uh, webinar about it um, from last year and you will also receive 
a link uh, with technical um, webinar. And on the next slide, you can see that each um, social media and each algorithm likes a different kind of formats. So don't forget that you should prepare a nice pic for the Instagram or a short uh, video uh, for Facebook, um, which doesn't work here. Or, yeah, Works now. Moving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and use like the whole palette of um, possibilities that each uh, social media channel gives you. So post uh, on groups. Uh, on the next slide, you can see that we also use uh, stories. Um, so use them all on the Twitter on the next slide. Uh, please uh, post multiple by times. Uh, it's not only one tweet, uh, but you need to keep reminding your audience that the series and the next uh, webinar is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter where you post it, the most important thing is clear call to action. So you need to make people register and uh, join uh, your webinar. Uh, the next one is uh, partnerships. This is very important to involve into promotion your experts, influencers, your network, your coworkers. So ask them to spread the word uh, in the online communities, uh, share the news uh, with your coworkers. It's a great opportunity for them to see what's your organization doing, but also for the self-development. And you may use the uh, profiles also to share the news. Now we are testing an email signature, no worries, uh, and informing about uh, the webinar uh, there. So we'll see how it works. And never stop promotion. It doesn't uh, stop here just after this webinar. Uh, use uh, the recordings, additional materials posted in social media, your newsletters, your website, especially when uh, it fits uh, your organization uh, communication strategy. And meanwhile, check the statistics, co cooperate with producer, because if you see that there are not enough uh, registration according to your KPIs, you need to work harder. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. Uh, okay, very quickly. Um, we're back where you start promotion, you never stop. Uh, and in the meantime, it's two or three days before the webinar. And do you organize a trial run? And this is basically a general rehe rehearsal for the webinar. Uh, try to do it at a similar time uh, that the webinar will be happening to check the lighting, uh, to check the background. Uh, um, we usually um, encourage that there is nothing in the background. As you can see, we do not follow those rules ourselves. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, the, the less things happening uh, and distracting, uh, the better. Uh, obviously, always check the internet connection, check the sound. Um, the key feature for us is screen sharing because the way we do webinars is that the expert is always in a different uh, room or a different country uh, usually. So the way he or she shares the screen is by screen share. Uh, so you have to see if that works. The presenter has to physically click through, uh, uh, use that option so that he or she knows how it works. Uh, you have to go through uh, the presentation if you have any videos, animations, uh, music, um, sound effects that uh, you just need to check all of those out. Obviously, quizzes and polls uh, also need to be uh, tested. And again, depending on the experience of your presenter, this call can either take 30 minutes and be just that, just a technical checkup of how the things work, or it can be a longer call through which you treat it as a general rehearsal. So the presenter actually gives the webinar to you as a participant, as if you were the participant. It depends on who you are working with. Um, and then the day arrives. Uh, it's the day off. Uh, so the way we do it is that me and Anka, the facilitator and co-facilitator, and the presenter, we log in about 30 minutes before uh, before the, web, the start of the webinar. We again do a sound screen share check. We see if the presentation works. We set up the background uh, slide so people know what to, that they 
logged into the right place, which is important. Uh, we mute participants. If you're not using a software that does it automatically, then you have to remember to do it. Kasia usually, that's a pro tip, Kasia usually participates as an attendee, so she can see if anything goes wrong from the other side, uh, from your side, for the participant side. Uh, and she also monitors the, the social media, so that's, uh, that's all, all, uh, all, also an important role. And then, then we start. So like you've seen today, I usually do the intro. I introduce everyone. I quick, very briefly say why, why we're organizing this webinar. Is this a part of a series? Is this a one-off? Um, I introduce the presenter. I go through the logistics uh, very briefly. Um, the important thing is to remember to record and go uh, use Facebook Live. Um, again with some trouble today in her case um then wh while the presenter is talking i usually keep the time please do not quote me on this today <laughs> uh, because we are so over time uh and but i do and if, if something goes if uh, if it's taking too long that i then we usually have a signal going on so it's whether i interrupt and say that we're over time or i don't know like i show something on the on the um, on the camera so that the presenter knows that uh, that we are running out of time. Anna monitors the uh, co-facilitator moni monitors the chat box, fishing out the questions, fishing out things that we will later address in the in the Q and A. And that is important because me, while talking, could not focus on the chat uh, as well. So you need that other person. And then of course you say you do it a Q and A. You say thank yous, you say your goodbyes. Uh, and this is from the participants' uh, perspective. This is um, the end. But from the producer's perspective, this is not the end of the, of the webinar, uh, of the work that goes into making a webinar. Because what we will do, me, Kasia, and Anna, uh, after this uh, ends, uh, we, have, we have a five minute break to get some water, and then we jump on a Zoom call to do a debriefing. And we always do this with the presenter as well to do a debriefing like while the adrenaline is still going to so we just very quickly go through what went well what could be improved uh what did we like what we didn't like uh how was the cooperation in general and that call usually takes about 20 minutes it's not long and but it's set up beforehand and it happens right after the webinar we within our team the three of us we also have a debriefing that happens usually a week out after uh, during which we also analyze the statistics uh, which I'll, t I'll show you here because um, the day after the webinar we upload the recording we upload it to Tech Soup Europe's uh, YouTube channel and then we send out through the software through Zoom you will receive this email tomorrow um, you will uh, receive an email in which we will put a link to the recording, uh, a link to the presentation. That is optional because not everybody, not every expert wants to share their presentation. Link to everything else you promised throughout or that came out during the webinar. Link to a short evaluation form. And this is a very, very big request of mine because apart from loving webinars, I also love evaluations. And you will receive this email and you will receive this link. And if you could answer those four questions, that would be really helpful to us. It really helps us kind of get better and understand what went, what, what went well and what could be improved. Info about, you can insert their info about what's coming up next. Do you have any other webinars, any other educational activities you want people to know about? And obviously all your social media handles. And uh, what is also important to us, and we started to, to do, it, it's really use, it, it comes really useful to us, check analytics. And this is nothing super advanced. It can literally be how many people registered, how many attended, where were they from, um, what um, Kasia also checks all the social media uh, statistics so we know what what types of materials work best and uh, were most useful so that really helps you learn this is what we discussed during the, our internal team debriefing I'm so sorry we had a quiz but we are so out of time and we want to um, we want to uh, answer some of your questions uh, so we'll sk skip that um, and just very briefly, again, if you know what, if you have interesting content, valuable content, useful content, that is key. Please do not worry about anything else. Do not, definitely do not worry about the technological side of, side of things. Just go and into the world and do, start doing webinars because they're going to be 
probably not great at the beginning, um, but then you'll improve immediately after from one to the other. And that's a, that's a guarantee. And uh, this sounds like a, a lifestyle guide, um, and I'm sorry for this, but uh, it's really important that you enjoy it. Meaning um, it's in these times, especially a uh, webinar is an opportunity to kind of, yeah, meet people, maybe not in a traditional sense, but go out to people, have contact with your audiences, uh, to have contact with great presenters, experts that share their knowledge. So, um, and enjoyment also goes uh, a long way when something goes wrong. So if you're enjoying it, uh, you don't really care that much if, uh, if there's a technical mishap or something that didn't go wrong. So please do. Um, and again, everything we talked about today, uh, you will be able to find in the uh, short guide to making webinars that we have created, link to which you will receive in the email tomorrow. And we would be more than grateful if you would let us know what you think about it, whether it's useful, if you could share it with every, anyone you know that, uh, that might find it uh, uh, valuable and might uh, uh, use it for their uh, work. Okay. Finally, I'm done. So Maya, don't, um, don't just take a breath and uh, drink something because there is, uh, there is tons of questions and we will answer them in the email following our email or as soon as possible. And there was one question, why do we choose a day after? So one of the, uh, one of the answers and reasons is because it takes time to collect all the links that we promised on the go. So uh, we just give our experts time to prepare answers and for us to make sure that everything that is relevant to the webinar will be in the uh, follow-up email. Um, and so because we're so out of time, I will have two questions, Maya, because it was the most reoccurring theme was GDPR and safety of Zoom. So I know that you're fighting with Zoom and uh, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is a story, a real life story. And the second question that is like, what are the big no-no's in making webinars? What would be Kasia's one big no-no? yours and I can also come back to that. So we will finish with those two. So first the GDPR and safety and no no. Yes, the GDPR issue is something that I've been trying to solve for uh, or solve or get information on for a while now because I have been corresponding with Zoom wildly asking them about their GDPR compliance. Um, and apart from the general information that they are GDPR compliant, uh, you cannot really find anything, any additional information uh, on there. So um, for all uh, kind of good faith that we have uh, in, their, in their processes, they uh, they promise that they are not using those databases the, that the data that they collect for anything else. We ourselves also are not using the registration uh, data unless we we use it <clears throat> by asking specific questions. So, for example, uh, re while registering for this, we asked you whether you wanted to receive a newsletter, and only if you answered yes, then only then we can we can put you on the, on the list of, uh, of our newsletter recipients. We do not use those, uh, uh, those contacts for, uh, for our other promotional purposes because you have to uh, agree to it. Uh, I can promise you that as soon as I have an answer from them, I will share it somehow with you, maybe through our, uh, maybe through our newsletter, uh, because it is something that we, we, we do worry about. Um, but the alternative is to not use any software um, at all, which is which is also not great because it really does make it it, it makes things extremely more. Um, it makes a lot of things easier, and it's, it makes it easier also for you from your side as, a, as participants to to get those emails, to have all the information in one place. Um, so, so yeah, so we're we're looking into that, and we're, we're we're trying to figure it out. And I think the more kind of pressure they they will receive, uh, and questions, the the better. Because I yeah, I think it's in all our interest to kind of solve this. Thank you, Maya. I know that you're struggling a lot and with, with Zoom and with making the decision what is the safety uh, of yeah. all, all sometimes very vulnerable groups that we're trying to reach out with uh, with Zoom. So, Kasia, I have a question to you about your no-no, the biggest no-no in making webinars. In communicating webinars, it's unless it works five times in a row, the Facebook Live, 
<laughs> and you have 900 particip uh, registrations and you know that there is a limit of 500 and you are so worried that everybody comes. So we announce Facebook lives and suddenly Zoom and Facebook don't cooperate and you have more <laughs> work uh, then. So this is my no, no. Okay, Maya, your no, no. <laughs> That's that's difficult. Um, we've had we've had an issue, but it's also technical. So I don't know if that's really that interesting. We've had an issue with uh, passwords, and we've had an issue with uh, logins. Um, so you have to be careful um, if you're setting up a webinar uh, whether you click or unclick uh, an option to use a password or an option to use uh, in order to increase the safety of the webinar. You can use a password, or you can use you can uh, make it so that only uh, logged in participants uh, can join the webinar. But that creates a whole other range of issues, especially when your participants are used to just clicking on the link and registering and then clicking on the link and then it takes them straight to, to the webinar. If you're asking them to log in before or use, do any other additional activity, it, 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 it creates, a, for a lot of them, it creates a, a, a challenge. So what you can do in that situation is communicate um, that you're doing it. So Kasia prepares a separate post about it. Um, and you kind of put it also in the description of the webinar, but still does not, that does, does not um, kind of guarantee a success. So as concerned I am with security issues, webinars are specific in a way that it is about getting as many people to your webinar as possible. So getting the message across to as many people as possible. So as easy it is, as easy you, as you can make it, the better. Meaning like the less hurdles and less opportunities for people to kind of fall out because something was too difficult. They didn't understand an email or the link was hidden or yeah, there was an additional login um, uh, procedure. Um, yeah. The, to make it as easier for them as possible would be would be my uh, my my recommendation. But Anna, what about you? Your last one, and then we're off. Very quickly, I think that that goes along trainings. My thinking is always like how to make it uh, education efficient and don't kill by PowerPoint. Because people invest a lot in their PowerPoints, and then they're just monotonous voice, emotionless um, kind of expert face, and they don't enjoy it because it's super stressful. So if you're stressed, rehearse before and try to be comfortable with the software and the situation. It is unnatural, like right now, less and less, but it is still unnatural. Don't kill yourself with boredom and don't kill others with boredom because in, at the end is all about making people learn something and boredom kills education. Yeah, but 45 slides is fine, right? It's like, it's totally okay. Beautiful with dots, <laughs> colorful. That is, I hope nobody was killed with this PowerPoint. <laughs> it's totally oh, okay. Only 30 people left after we crossed the time. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this is, we are uh, out of time. Uh, mostly my fault. Uh, no, only my fault. I'm so sorry. Uh, but thank you so much. We hope this was useful. Thank you, Kasia. And thank you, Anna. Uh, as always, it was a, a, a delight and a pleasure. Uh, please uh, remember that you will receive all the important links um, tomorrow in an email. You can always contact us uh, directly. There will be my email uh, put in there. Uh, please use 